Hi, my name is Christian Glück, Product Manager from Dynacord, and today I would like to give you an overview what's new in the next SonicQ release 1.3. So, before I jump into the details, SonicQ is our ecosystem that's uh, covering quite a range of, of products. So, beside the SonicQ software and SonicQ control, that allows customized control panels for PCs and iOS devices. We have the MX5 Matrix Mix Engine and our IPX, TGX, and C and L series amplifiers. So, the first thing that you see is new in SonicQ is the starting page. You have on the left side a list with recent projects, and the starting page itself is showing you and explain, giving a brief overview about the major new topics. First topic, and this is probably the biggest one for the Matrix Mix Engine MXE5, we have a free DSP configuration. We still keep the old one, and we show you how to use both. We have upgraded our logic to the full-blown task engine, and still show you how to use the old logic. So, let's dive into it. So, before we jump into the software, let me give you a brief overview about the MX5 the Matrix Mix Engine. So, MX5 has 12 mic line inputs, 8 line outputs at 118 dB dynamic range, 8 configurable GPIOs, and is offering 24 Dante channels inputs and outputs. So, you have a matrix with a total of 36 inputs and 32 outputs. Available besides the controls through SonicQ, just to make the picture complete, is also plugins for QSIS or Crestron controls. So, now let's see what we can do with these in and outputs in the MXC5. So, when you go to your catalog and you drag in an MXC5 and open the settings, you'll get the DSP workspace and you don't see anything right now because all the elements that you can use for your DSP designs are in the catalog on the left side. So we have inputs, analog and Dante, we have outputs, analog and Dante, then we have the dynamics, compressor, ducker, noise gate, peak and RMS limiters, uh, level settings, delay, equalizer, metering, and down here you find the speaker processing block which is the same speaker processing block that we are using in our IPX TGX amplifiers. So, to start a configuration, you drag and drop elements from the DSP block catalog onto your workspace. Down here, you can mark quantities if you wanna have multiple at a time. So, let's say I would like to have eight analog inputs. I put in the figure eight, and I'm dragging on my screen eight analog inputs. The navigation on the screen is the same that you know from the main workspace in SonicQ. With your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out, which you could also do down here. And with the right mouse click, you can keep it and move things around that you can work easily. So I have eight analog inputs. Uh, you can add, as I said, compressors, dynamics, whatever. Let's say I'm using four channels with compressors. So you drag them in. That is four pieces and maybe as a next element we like some equalizers. In the PEQ you can select how many bands you want, so up to 30. Let's say four bands should be enough and I like equalizers on all channels, so I'm getting in eight channels and dragging them onto the workspace. So you might have noticed that the elements I'm bringing in in multiples come in a fixed distance, so they are assigned to the line to the layer. And this helps you when you start making connections. So whatever I take that is arranged in the workspace layer from the top element, it will auto-connect all the elements below. So I take the top one and it connects here and I go from here to there and I have already here, my input strips. So, as a next part, let's bring in a mixer. So, under routing and mixing, you have mixers and you can determine the size of your mixer. So, in my case here, I would say, okay, I got four inputs. Maybe later on, I would like to add some Dante. 
So the mixer can have up to 128 inputs. That's not a problem. Now I don't need that many. Let's say for today I'm fine with 16 inputs and in my project I want also 16 outputs just for fun. Just one mixer and I bring it in. So adjust the workspace that I see what it is and as I mentioned before the connection works top down. You see there's a little bit of activity down here in the DSP but to really get an idea about uh, DSP capacity um, you need a full signal channel. So I'm saying okay all my 16 outputs I want them to be on Dante so I use 16 Dante outputs and bring them in. So align them here and making a connection from the top to the bottom and you see closing the audio chain input to output now I have the overview I'm using 10.6% of the DSP resources. Okay now once you have DSP elements on your workspace and you have made connections um, very important feature here we have an undo and redo button. So if the last action was not what you wanted you can take it back or redo so quite handy. Now it might also be that in my beautiful design I said okay I have those additional channels in my mixer what do you use them for? Now maybe I want to make a connection to an input that is not using the compressor and the equalizer and this is an important thing every DSP block output you can patch to multiple inputs so basically you can imagine this is like split box in the DSP. You can also stagger mixers so it's not just that you have one mixing instance you can have multiple mixers you can cascade them creating sub mixes whether you use them for the auto processing or just for controlling collecting channels as a side chain for Ducker and so on and so on. So uh, really a lot of possibilities here to customize your project. Another very important feature is that once you have your DSP blocks there, your function is fine, but let's say you find out that mm, the four EQ bands you thought in the beginning might not be enough. Every element that you clap has an adjust button. And when you go to adjust, you see here's my PEQ with four bands. So you can have more or less bands and adjust that later on. So once you've done with the DSP configuration, you can go online with the MXE and now start setting up the individual DSP parameters. So let's start with an input block where you see we have gain, phantom power, and invert, and level and mute function already in this block. So I put in some signal and as you bring up the gain you see all oh, there is also a VU meter. So there is no need to actually add additional VU meters in your design or whatsoever. The inputs and the same happens on the outputs have already included DSPs. Now let's jump to the mixer. So we've selected a 16 by 60 mixer so I have my inputs and I see already on the mixer as well I have a VU meter and see oh yeah on channel 11 there is signal present. Now to set the cross points in the matrix and the levels you simply select the channels the outputs where you want this input to appear and as soon you see when you select cross points faders coming up. Now this fader element allows you to make the connection and you see they turn blue and the very minute I do this you see also the outputs also have VU metering right away. So you see already your levels is set and you can use this fader to change the volume of your selection of cross points. When you're done you hit deselect the fader disappears and you see exactly okay now you can go on to the next cross points and continue your routing and cross point levels. Now a function you might be familiar with from the previous versions is when you have a panel designer open in SonicQ to create a customized panel you see elements in your flyout that got marked in purple color. That means these are elements that you can drag and drop directly onto your control screen. So you have to press the control button 
And if I take that VU meter and drag it onto my screen, I have the VU meter and you see it's actually working the very same minute. Same goes for everything else, mute, input, cross point level, all these things that are highlighted in purple. Now, to accomplish the fact that in today's audio systems, DSPs are not only processing the audio part, but also becoming, in many cases, the central control piece and the interface for integration to any third party devices. In SonicQ 1.3, we have upgraded our system logic to a full blown task engine, something that you might have known from the predecessor N8000. So, how do I explain the task engine? The easiest thing is let's do a simple example. So you click on the logic and this opens the workspace with the task engine where you find all the operation and the devices. So let me bring in an MXE5 matrix and let's say in our example, we want to create a simple emergency mute. So using a GPI to mute all outputs of the audio system. So here is my MXE. I have to select my device, the one that I connecting, which is matrix one from the network. And I uh, select one of the GPIs. I'm using GPI number two. And now I'm already done for the matrix part. So we open our control space and look for our outputs. So dragging in, bringing this over. Now multi-selection on all the MXE outputs. And what you see now is the flyout. And what has changed is that all the controls that you are available for drag and drop to the workspace for the task engine, which is by the way, the same as the workspace for the panel designer are highlighted in purple. So anything, meter, whatever control you need, if you press the control button and hold it, you can drag and drop to the workspace. So let's do this for the mute button drag it onto the workspace and here I have all my output mutes on the workspace. So now I just need to connect my GPI to the workspace and hit the deploy button, which is writing all the coding now to the engine on the MXC5 device. And you see immediately that the debug line is showing you the value because currently this GPI is open, it's not closed. So let's take a look, open the status bar on the MXE and take a look where our GPI2 is. It's currently open. And as soon as I close GPI number two, you see the value true is displayed. The outputs are all muted. And if we open it up again, same thing happens the other way around. Status goes back to false and everything is unmuted. So. And Sonic 1.3, the task engine is a very important tool to get simple or complex tasks in the system you need to accomplish in an easy manner to program and operate. So that was a brief overview about Sonic 1.3. You saw we have some really major important new features, free DSP config, task engine, and there's a few more other bits and pieces I haven't even shown you and talked about. Thank you very much for watching and hope to see you soon.